right, what's up, everyone? Sam here, Walsh and Mastermind, and I'm here with uh, Alex, um, which is one of our clients just who just finished recruiting um, recently. So I wanted to get Alex to come on here and talk to you guys a little bit about his experience um, of going through the process and kind of the challenges he encountered and how he was able to overcome it. So Alex, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and also congratulations on the offer. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for having me. Um, if you don't mind just kind of giving everyone a quick introduction of kind of like who you are, like what school do you go to, like a little bit about your background um, and kind of like how, how you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Alex Rizbilla. Um, you know, I'm from the Minneapolis area, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've lived here my whole life, you know, grew up in the area and uh, you know, I really got interested in, you know, investment banking, um, probably about my sophomore year of high school. I've had a lot of um, industry mentors that you know have worked in the industry, whether it be in you know sales and trading or investment banking or private equity, um, kind of everywhere along those lines. And um, I really reached out to them to try and figure out what I wanted to do going into college, and you know also getting recruited to play you know, collegiate lacrosse. I just start thinking about what I wanted to do for that next 40 years, that would ultimately help me decide where I was going to spend my next four. So you know going throughout the recruiting process, I was really looking to find not only the best finance program, but obviously, you know, the best calls across program as well. Um, you know, I got in front of the staff at RIT and, you know, I kind of fell in love on my visit. It felt like home to me. So, you know, I decided to go to the Rochester Institute of Technology in Rochester, New York. Uh, I'm a current senior there now studying finance and management of information systems to get a little more of a technical background. But, um, you know, throughout my, you know, my professional career, I started with a internship in public finance. Then, you know, I moved to um, corporate finance with position with Boston Scientific. And then last summer, I was doing more of like a portfolio strategies, wealth management type of role with the Royal Bank of Canada with their U.S. wealth management headquarters in Minneapolis. So, um, you know, I was hoping to, you know, build up to that, you know, job in investment banking. I think I got a different experience than, than you know, maybe most people in the typical investment banking recruitment throughout, you know, their internship days and, you know, coming out of college. And, uh, you know, I was thankful to, you know, come across this, this opportunity with Sam and work with him and, you know, definitely helped me get to where I am today. And I, you know, recently just accepted an you know, offer to work as an analyst in private equity at K1 Investment Management in uh, Manhattan Beach, California. So, you know, really excited to start and uh, really excited to be on the show. So thanks, Sam. That's awesome, man. Congratulations again. So, Let's uh so take us all the all the way back to the beginning. So obviously, you know, you go to a non-target school, um, RIT. Probably not a lot of students in your school that are going to work on Wall Street or banking or private equity and whatnot, right? But like, how long ago did you kind of start thinking seriously about getting into this field, and how long ago did you start actively preparing and you know trying to recruit, so to speak? Yeah, so I would say the spring semester of my freshman year is when I seriously started, you know, working up, um, whether it be like creating a LinkedIn account and starting to, you know, get the ball rolling with trying to find um, some alumni that worked, you know, on Wall Street. And, you know, we didn't really have that. We, you know, obviously, like you mentioned, coming from a non-target school, you know, we've had a couple of people go into investment banking. Now a good friend of mine is doing M&A at JP Morgan. Another you know, good friend of mine in the class above me was, uh, is with Hulahan Loki right now. And then um, a couple that have worked at KKR in their capital markets team. So not exactly the private equity team, but um, so not having that alumni base, I think was a little bit tough for me. Um, but that's when I really started taking it seriously, but I didn't realize, you know, how serious it really was. And that's kind of why um, the structure at Wall Street Mastermind really helped me out. I didn't understand how important the networking piece was and, um, you know, kind of the, the finer details of recruitment, you know, obviously just sending out applications blindly is, you know, is a way that you're probably not going to be as successful uh, in the recruiting process for investment banking. So I would say that my freshman year, I started really taking it seriously. But, um, you know, later in my collegiate career is when I really found out how serious the uh, recruitment process was and, you know, how important networking was and, and some of the things like that, that I would have probably never uh, would have found without Wall Street Mastermind. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, I think after my, you know, end of my freshman year is when I started to really take it seriously. Got it. 
Okay. So you actually started pretty early because you started as a freshman. Um, and so I know that we first came in contact, I think in like September of 2018. So back then probably like you were just starting your junior year of college. Right. Right. Um, and I don't think we worked together right off the bat, but I think we have maybe chatted a bit and then we also just like exchanged some emails and kept in touch. But how was the recruiting process for you, um, you know, back around your sophomore, junior? Because I assume you were trying to recruit for um, like a junior summer internship then on your own, right? Yep. So how did that go for you? Yeah, it was really difficult. Um, it was really hard to get interviews at, you know, a lot of the different investment banking firms out there, whether it be, you know, at any level, whether it was a bulge bracket or a middle market or even any boutiques really. Um, it was really hard to get interviews, um, especially coming from a non-target school, you know, didn't really have that structure where that I could use to, you know, easily help me, uh, guide me throughout the recruiting process. So, um, and then the, some of the, you know, the interviews that I actually got, you know, I wasn't really prepared for them, didn't really know what to expect. You know, I kind of studied technicals on my own for some, some, you know, online guides that I've had from, you know, friends that have sent me, but, you know, I, I was really struggling with trying to figure out. Um, like preparing for interviews and whether it be technical questions or behavioral questions, really uh, mm -hmm. just trying to find the best way to prepare for those. And I found that that really wasn't working for me. So that's when I really started to take Wall Street Mastermind seriously. Yeah. I saw the success rate. I saw that, um, you know, it's a structured program that's going to help me learn easier and learn the concepts and actually master them and not just memorize them. Yeah. I think um, we speak to a lot of students who, uh, maybe we're in a similar situation as you, which is maybe they haven't gone through the recruiting process officially yet when they first speak to us. And their inclination is to maybe try it on their own first to see how it goes, right? Which I think is also kind of what you did. Like, how do you, how do you think about that? Um, like for people who think about doing it on their own just to see if it works out, like, would, is that something that, you recommend like in hindsight or do you feel like it's probably more helpful to just get started right off the bat or like what would have been different for you? Yeah, I think for me, it would have been nice to um, maybe have a little bit more of that structure with Wall Street Mastermind mm -hmm. um, specifically. So in, in my opinion, if I were to look back on hindsight, you know, obviously hindsight's 2020, but um, I think I would rather would have gone throughout in the Wall Street Mastermind program you know, I think it was good that I challenged myself and tried to start doing it on my own, but maybe I waited a little bit too long to get into Wall Street yeah. Mastermind. I think maybe at the start of my junior year, I really should have take, you know, done Wall Street Mastermind, get done the program, and then you know, maybe my sophomore year, try it on my own just to see, you know, kind of test the waters and see how I could do on my own. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I guess by junior, by, by junior year, when you first spoke to us, uh, that was first semester of junior year. Um, some of the bigger banks were kind of coming up on the tail end of the recruiting process already by then, right? Right. Got it. Um, so, what did you end up doing then for your um, junior summer? My junior summer, I worked at the Royal Bank Canada. I was doing uh, portfolio strategies. That was my official title. But um, you know, my manager, you know, he had some in industry experience at you know, working at Piper Joffrey, obviously their headquarters in, in Minneapolis, it's you know, so cl close in proximity that you know, you know a lot of people from that firm, but um, they knew what I wanted to do as well. They were, you know, well aware that, you know, investment banking was kind of the route I wanted to take. So yeah. um, they wanted to try and get me to work with a lot of different teams to kind of make the most out of this internship. So you know, I wore a lot of different hats at RBC. Um, you know, I worked with the equity research team, did some fixed incomes trading. We had one public finance investment banker there just raising money for you know government projects around the area so you know I, I shadowed him quite a bit and got some experience with him um different kind though his team's very small at rbc it's only about 10 of 10 people in total yeah. i believe between him the only one in the minneapolis office and then the rest were in new york so yeah. um but i i really looked at it as a as a way for me to leverage their network at the same time so um you know i was able to reach out to you know, people at the capital markets office in New York City and you know turns out a couple you know a couple people with similar types of background as me 
um, were working at the office. So I reached out to them and, you know, some, one of them was a really good friend of mine that I knew through, you know, sports. So uh, I was able to visit the office before heading back to school for my senior year, kind of network a bit. And, you know, that was obviously a great experience for me just to, you know, network with people in person and kind of, you know, put a face to a name and not exactly just over email or LinkedIn, which was awesome. But, you know, nothing really came of it, obviously not having that relevant experience as a, you know, summer analyst, especially at RBC, where they hire almost all of their incoming entry level analysts from the summer analyst class. It was, it was really tough for me to yeah. you know, have to actually get a job. Yeah. So then at the end of your junior summer, uh, well, first you try to make the move internally at RBC that didn't really work out. And then you basically had to kind of look at other banks and see and recruit again for full time, essentially. Yep. Got it. Okay. And so that was towards like the end of summer, probably in like August, or early September ish, the beginning of your senior year. Essentially. Yep. Yeah. So I I was putting out applications because you know when some of them were opening up in early summer, mid summer ish, I started immediately applying for them because I know they go on a rolling process usually. So. Um, I was trying to get, you know, applications out as quickly as possible so I could get, you know, eyes on my resume or my application. Yeah. Can you just tell the audience for those folks who are younger than you and maybe um, haven't gone through the process yet, like, is the full-time recruiting process harder than the summer recruiting process, would you say? Like, in terms of number of jobs available or, like, how – how different is the process? Cause I know like for summer recruiting, there's a very structured process for most banks where, you know, you apply and then you do higher views and then you do first round, super day, whatnot. For the full time, it's pretty different, right? Because it's basically like, if they have openings after their summers have already accepted offers, then they might hire a couple people. But if they don't, then they pretty much won't hire anyone, right? Right. Yeah, I would say availability of full-time analyst positions were few and far between. It was, you know, most banks are structured in a way where, you know, they go from summer analysts and they'll usually hire out of the summer analyst class. And, you know, every once in a while you'll get, um, you know, there'll be a job posting for an entry-level analyst position at, you know, at the bank. If, let's say, you know, a summer analyst decides to go to a different bank after, you know, not taking their offer. So, Jobs were really hard to find, especially entry level. Um, and the interview process for that was, you know, pretty similar, I'd say. Uh, I think the higher view maybe meant a little bit less. I think some of them still had them, some of them didn't. But um, coming from a non-target and not having that summer analyst experience, you know, they really tried to drill down on the technicals on me. So um, that was very important that for me to um, kind of play catch up a little bit and, and just show that, you know, I know these technical skills, even though I don't have – you know, relevant investment banking experience, so to speak, obviously coming from wealth management at RBC and then, you know, doing, you know, obviously a non-target school as well. So they, they really try to get me on, you know, the technical aspects and a lot of the interviews just to see um, if I knew what I was talking about. Got it. Okay. So then you go through that, um, you recruit. And then I think when you reached back out to me again was, like October of 2019. Um, and so it's a couple months into your senior year. What ultimately, actually, I think I was pretty surprised when you reached back out because we hadn't talked in a while, but what ultimately um, made you decide to reach out at that point? Yeah. So, you know, I've been on your mailing list for a while, the entire time really. And, you know, I always read those emails and, you know, I was just looking at the success that, you know, people that didn't even have finance experience were having with your program. And I figured uh, what I was doing wasn't working. Um, just trying to read the guides that I've had, you know, on hand for people that have you know, sent them to me, they just weren't working for me. And I think I needed more of a structure, sort of like a, a classroom type of structure. And I felt like I got that with Wall Street Mastermind. Um, so that was really the biggest thing that kind of attracted me to the program is that, you know, I could learn all of this stuff in a short amount of time obviously you know obviously like you said it's october like clock's ticking for me to get a job so um you know i can learn all these all these very difficult concept concepts but i can learn them in a short amount of time in a way that actually makes sense to me instead of just reading them out of a 
you know, a packet and then, you know, trying to regurgitate this information to somebody in a, in an interview. So that was really the kind of the turning point for me. Mm. So can you, so we primarily, I mean, by the time you reached out, it was so late, but like we were primarily worked with you on the interview side of things, right. On like your behavioral answers and on your technical answers. Um, what it, I feel like it's hard for people to kind of imagine what the difference is to prepare for their interviews through Wall Street Mastermind versus say, just reading the M&I guide or the Wall Street Oasis guide or you know whatever other guides that everybody's reading, right? Like what exactly is the difference? Because aren't all the answers already in the guides? Like why can't you just read the guides, memorize the answers to the 400 questions, let's say, and then like, why would you just, why wouldn't that just be make you prepared or why aren't you set just by doing that? If that worked for everybody, then everyone would have a job in investment banking, right? So, you know, all those, all those packets, you can read them, but you know, there's probably about three other 300 other people that are going to give them the same answer. Right. So, um, to me, the biggest difference, um, was that I could talk about it. I could talk about it in a way, you know, put my own spin on things. I didn't exactly regurgitate in a you know, paragraph out of a booklet. You know, I could talk about it and, you know, I knew the concepts in my head and, you know, they, I understand them better than just reading them and then talking about it. I could actually talk about it intelligently with them. And I think that was the biggest difference for me um, going throughout the, you know, your program is that, it's different when you're just giving them an answer from a packet. They can kind of tell that you're just, you just memorize this and you just spit it back out at them. But, you know, going through your program, I just felt like I understand it all the concepts better. And, you know, I could talk about them myself. I didn't have to memorize them at all because I already knew the concepts. I feel, feel like I mastered them and, you know, I could kind of talk about them myself and I could talk about them intelligently. And that was the biggest difference. It kind of, you know, wowed some interviewers and, um, to me, it felt, it made me feel more confident. Mm. So basically in other words, your level of understanding for these technical concepts was much higher where rather than just regurgitating some rehearsed answer that you memorized, you're, I'm guessing most of the time your interviewers weren't asking you the exact same questions in the guides anyway. And so you were kind of required to like adapt and it has to be basically like application knowledge where you can apply whatever you, concepts you've already learned to different situations and scenarios. And I think if I remember correctly, some of your interviews, you even had to do like case studies and things like that, where it wasn't even just answering questions. You had to actually like do something with it. Right. Is that, is that right? That's right. Got it. Okay. So really the difference is just memorization kind of gets you this far, but if, if you, you want to get to the level where it's application knowledge, or I always say like the, the best test of whether you're really where you need to be at is whether you can teach these concepts to someone else. And, and you feel like after doing the program, you actually, able to understand these concepts well enough to be able to teach it as opposed to just regurgitate it. Right. And those packets, it's it, to me, it felt like trying to cram for an exam the night before it. And that, that was really how, how I felt about it. It's, you know, there's 300 different answers in that entire packet. Try to memorize all of them. Cause yeah. you know, you're going to, a lot of them, a lot of questions are going to ask are in there, but how did, like, how are you going to answer all these questions and memorize every single answer to them. So to me, it felt like I was just cramming for an exam the night before. Whereas um, with wall street mastermind, it felt like I was actually being taught how to do it and you know, being taught all the little finer details that, that, that won't show up in those um, in those guides. Yeah. Got it. Um, and so that's on the technical side, right? What about the behavioral side? Like behaviorals, a lot of people say like, that's pretty easy. Just talk about yourself, right? And I feel like you, someone like you too, you know, um, you're a pretty well-spoken guy. You're very presentable. You, 
you're an athlete, you're not like socially awkward or anything like that. What, what did you need help with on the behavioral side? Cause I mean, most people could just, anyone can talk about themselves, right? Like, was there a, a difference on that end? And if so, like, what would you say that was? I would say the biggest improvements that I made in my interviewing was in the behavioral side, mm. bar none. More uh, than the technicals. More than the technicals. Uh, and yeah, like you said, I'm a very outspoken guy. Like I can talk about myself and it's, you know, it's fine. I'm pretty comfortable with the behavioral side of things. And I even said that when you and I started working together, but um, I was really looking to try and work on the technical side. And, you know, I obviously did, you know, went throughout the program, but I kind of realized how important the behavioral side is. It's almost just as important as the technical portion, maybe even more. Um, so I really kind of uh, took that as you know, note that I still need to improve. And there's a structure to these answers on the behavioral side that you kind of taught me and it made me more confident, more confident to talk about, you know, my story in a way that was um, concise, yet it still made sense. And it kind of checked all the boxes for the interviewers, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, if I beforehand, um, I'll give you an example, maybe in an interview beforehand, before I, you know, did Wall Street Mastermind, you know, I might ramble a little bit too much and, you know, the interviewer might fall asleep at that point. Um, but after the program, I just felt like I could give that same answer and that same level of detail and information in a concise amount of time that was still engaging to the person sitting across the table from me. And I think that was the biggest difference. Got it. Um, and so it's, some of it sounds like it's taking the stories and experiences you already had, um, but just presenting it in a better way, either through better frameworks and better structures for your answers, or sometimes it's like you can say certain things differently to get the same point across, but in a more concise manner. Exactly. Because bankers have ADD. Yep. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, would you say that, I mean, so on the behavioral side too, I think everybody always has an idea for what they want to say, but I think what most people aren't, a hundred percent confident about is whether what they want to say and what the bankers want to hear are kind of the same, right? Like whether it aligns with what the bankers are looking for. And so like the biggest thing too, probably is just being able to know that this is what the bankers want to hear. And then you can take what you were planning on saying originally, and then maybe refining it to tailor it towards what they're looking for so that that's that's the part that really gives you more confidence when you walk into the interview right? absolutely yep the tailing part of it was was definitely what made me more confident because you know i knew what they wanted to hear but and at the same time i had experiences that um kind of matched that and i just needed to find a way to tailor them in a way that you know is engaging and also pre presenting it effectively to you know the person sitting across the table from me got it okay very cool. So ultimately we started working in like at the very end of October, um, which was like, I guess probably to you felt late in the recruiting process, I'm sure. Um, and then how much longer did you have to recruit for before you um, finally accepted the offer? Yeah. So the process with K1 was really long. Um, I believe I started it probably shortly after you and I started working together and then it concluded end of March is when they started giving out offers. And it was a very long process. I had to talk to a lot of different people you know, tons of different interviews with, you know, principals and, you know, other analysts or um, even the CEO and you know, the founder of the, the company, the partner. So um, <laughs> wow. it was a, it was a really long process, but you know, I had a lot of other different interviews. Um, in between there with a lot of other different firms, um, KKR, for example, for their capital markets team, I had to talk to, you know, at least eight people before, um, receiving that offer and unfortunately getting it taken away due to you know, coronavirus, which kind of stinks, but, um, wow, that happened. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that, that does suck, but you're not, you're not the only person to, um, get, a get gypped by the coronavirus, but that, that does suck. I'm sorry to hear that. Yep. I just looked at it as sort of a, 
So obviously it is, it is what it is. And, you know, obviously they had to make their choices in order to, you know, keep their employees safe and whatnot. And um, just kind of put my nose back to the grindstone and, you know, kept working to get, you know, K1 at that point. Yeah. So the K1 process took five months. Sounds like end of October to end of March. How many rounds did you have to go through? Ooh, rounds wise. Um, I might've lost count to be honest. I think it was, uh, let's see my super day. I think I interviewed with three different people. Um, I actually went, I flew when they were doing business in New York. Um, I flew to New York city and sat down with, you know, senior analyst. So, um, I must've had four different rounds. Wow. Probably. Okay. And they make you do like, was it, were these all just straight up interviews? Did they make you do like assignments, case studies, like anything unique about the private equity interview process you would say? Yeah. Um, when I was interviewing with some of the analysts, it was more behavioral, just kind of, you know, check out and see if my personality would fit well with the team, mostly what that, that was about. And then, you know, once I started to get to people that were a little bit higher up in the firm, so the principal was really what I got my most tactical interview. And that's when they were talking about, um, you know, recent transactions or, you know, portfolio companies and what I thought of them and, you know, providing a little bit of analysis for them, um, doing a case study as well. Um, didn't have to do really much on an LBO. It was more of just walking through to understand that I could verbally um, tell them, you know, some of the steps of it. And, you know, it was, it was pretty high level stuff for the LBO, but for the most part, it was all, you know, I did have a case study and, you know, I had to talk about some of their, you know, recent transactions and portfolio companies as well. Got it. Got it. Okay. So pretty, pretty tough interview. <laughs> that definitely doesn't sound like the type of interview that um, you could have just aced with, uh, with memorizing a guide. So got it. Okay. Um, that's, but that's awesome, man. I mean, sorry to hear about the kick our capital markets, obviously, but I'm glad that ultimately it did have a happy ending and you did get a really solid offer, which, um, which I'm very excited for you about. Do you have any last minute just advice for maybe people who are in similar situation as you, maybe they go to a non-target school, don't have a lot of alumni that work on wall street. Maybe they started banking a little bit or start pursuing, you know, banking or private equity a little bit late. Like, what what would you want to tell those people or what do you wish someone would have told you maybe back when you were starting this process yeah i wish um back when i was starting the process i kind of wish i got the advice about how important the networking portion is and you know i didn't really realize um how important it was and once i did I, you know i kind of looked back and said oh well i wish i would have done a little bit more of that but you know people out there my advice for anybody else out there that you know, goes to a non-target school or, you know, maybe a little bit late in the process. Um, the networking portion is, is maybe one of the most important. Um, you know, it, get, it kind of gets your foot in the door. And if you're a really likable person and that person likes you, then that could lead to a job. Um, you know, I've seen it before and, you know, I've seen it with, a, you know, a lot of different situations. But, you know, if you're a likable person and they, they think you'd be a good, good fit on their team and that you're a hard worker and, you're, you know, you're willing to put in the hours, then, um, certainly there's something that can come of that. And, you know, people out there, they, they want to help you. Um, people out there, they, they want to help you out. They want to give you advice. Um, you know, they want to talk about, you know, their experience and, you know, how they can be of help and of service to you. And I found that um, to be maybe one of the best things about uh, working with Wall Street Mastermind is that I kind of learned the networking piece. And once I learned the networking piece, I became far more effective in that. And, you know, people were really, you know, ready to go to bat for me when it came to helping me find jobs in investment banking or private equity. That make a big difference in getting you interviews and things like that. Makes a huge difference. I've expanded my network probably tenfold compared to what it was before. Wow. How many do you, do you know roughly how many people you have to reach out to in this process? Yeah, I had to reach out to, it was a lot of people. I might've lost count, but we could be in the triple digits at this point, but I did a lot of networking. Um, I kind of took that as, you know, something I really needed to work on. So um, I was looking at a lot of different, you know, banks and a lot of different areas and people that I can connect with. And I'm, I'm, I'm still doing it now. Even you know, I've already secured the full-time offer, but I, I still want to you know expand that network because you never know what can come out of it. 
No, you never stop networking because um, you're gonna have a long career ahead of you, and who knows, like you know, someone like, and I can tell you, I have I've been working for over a decade. You, a lot of times, you get help from um, the least expected places, right? right. Um, and they actually say that I, I think I read this somewhere once, but um, once you get older and you start, uh, like a lot of the job opportunities or professional opportunities actually come from your um not like your super close network like the people you're super close with but actually the more loosely re related some a lot of times even just acquaintances but you're loosely connected with them and that's where the opportunities pop up right and so i think you're absolutely doing the right thing man and i think that's a really good piece of advice that a lot of college students they don't realize just how much networking they have to do like i hear people sometimes college students will tell me very proud like oh, yeah, i have I reached out to like 30 people already. I've done so much networking and I'm always like, mm, no, I think you could do more. <laughs> yeah, you're just scratching the surface at that point. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's awesome, man. So th thank you for the, the awesome advice for, for our listeners. And so, um, look guys, I think, uh, you know, Alex is really a, a role model in terms of just, um, persevering and, you know, had to overcome, multiple obstacles along the way right and this is a similar story honestly for um, a lot of people who ultimately make it onto wall street but um sometimes you're not gonna uh get exactly what you want on the first try you know or sometimes like you get something you want and then uh, something outside of your control happens like the coronavirus and you lose the offer right but at the end of the day i think um the most important thing is that Alex never gave up and he controlled the things that were within his control, right? I mean, one, he uh, did try to do everything within his power that he could do. Um, but then when he, when that didn't work, um, he went out and got help just in time, right? Like he, granted, like I'm sure, like Alex said, he probably could have gotten help earlier, but still better late than never. Right. And ultimately he was able to, you know, secure a very um, great offer before he graduated and, and, you know, make the changes he needed to make on both the networking side and the technical interview side and the behavioral interview side. So taking care of all the things that he needed to take care of, right? So, you know, for those of you that are listening, like if you go to a non-target school, you know, or maybe if you're a little bit behind or you started recruiting process late, maybe you already tried to recruit and you didn't get the internship you wanted or you didn't get, um, yeah, you didn't get the summer offer that you wanted. Um, doesn't mean that you should give up, right? Like if you if you do the things that you need to do and you leave yourself enough time to execute, um, you have all the way up until right until the time when you're supposed to graduate to find this job, right? And actually, we we have clients that actually um, sometimes like even recruit until two or three months after they graduate and find a job. So I think the point is. You know, for those of you that are maybe struggling out there, everybody's struggling. It's hard. But the biggest thing is you can't give up, right? You can't give up, but rather, like, figure out what can you do differently. If what you've been doing hasn't been working, what can you do differently, right? And be very honest with yourself if something's not working. Don't just try to convince yourself into, well, if I just try a little bit harder or if I just spend a little bit more time, but I keep doing the same thing you're not going to get different results, right? So if you need to make an adjustment, make the adjustment. You know, if you need help, if you need some guidance, you can reach out to us. Um, we're always available, always happy to chat, regardless of whether we work together or not. Like the first time we talked to Alex, we didn't, we didn't work together, right? But we kept in touch. And I think like we exchanged some emails back and forth in between. I think Alex has some questions and he would always ping me and I would respond. Like we're just here to help. Um, we can't work with everybody. Obviously, we would love to work with everybody if we could, but we can't. But uh, at a minimum, you know, use us as a resource. And so if you want to um, speak to our team and figure out, you know, if we can give you some advice at a minimum or better yet, if it's a really good fit and you want to you wanna work with us, then what you can do is go schedule a free strategy session with us to start. Um, you can do that www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. Um, the street's abbreviated to ST. So it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And what we'll do is we'll hop on the phone with you for probably an hour or so. 
learn more about your situation, what your goals are, what are your challenges, what are you struggling with, where do you feel like you need help, and at a minimum, we'll give you some advice on what we think you should do if we're in your shoes. Um, and then, you know, if we feel like it makes sense um, to work together and you feel like it makes sense to work together, then we can discuss what that might look like as well. Because, you know, the way we work with everybody is um, it's pretty one-on-one, -on -one, right, Alex? Like it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's very customized. We can't really tell you what we're going to help you with until we know what you need help with. So um, that's why we have these conversations with everyone and encourage you guys to take us up on this offer. With that said, Alex, I want to thank you um, for taking the time to jump on and talk to us. I know you're uh, about to finish up your senior year, so I'm sure you're busy preparing for finals yeah. and exams and things like that. But huge congrats again on the offer. Um, it was an honor to be able to play a small part in this process and just you know give you that extra push along the way. But obviously you did all the heavy lifting and you deserve um, this amazing outcome that you worked so hard for. And so um, can't wait to see what you accomplish at K1 and definitely, uh, you know, keep us posted and don't be a stranger. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, not only for helping me out, but, you know, being a great resource and a mentor to me. And, you know, I really appreciate the, the time you put into Wall Street Mastermind to make it as good as it is. I think that's a, a direct reflection of, you know, your willingness to help people and, you know, help open doors for us that could have never been done before. So me personally, I don't know if I could have ever gotten this offer without you. And you know, I'm, I'm really excited to get, you know, get started at K1 this summer. And um, thank you again for all that you've done. Man, uh, I appreciate uh, the kind words. And again, um, it was an honor. And so, you know, let's, uh, let's continue to stay in touch, man. Like, you know, like, like I always tell everyone, um, once you're a part of the Wall Street Mastermind family, you're always part of the family, you know? So our uh, relationship doesn't really end here. And um, if there's anything else I could ever help you with, you know, just feel free to reach out. Absolutely. Awesome, man. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for today. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back with a lot more of these in the, in the coming months as uh, we go through the recruiting process. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, Alex. We'll talk soon. Yep. Talk soon. All right.